Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. I want to talk a little bit about how Islam is perceived in different cultures. I understand that there is a fundamental difference between how Western people perceive Islam and how Indians or Hindus perceive Islam. See, to the Western people, Islam was always the enemy at the door. The other one, it was us and them. To Indian people, it is those people, that culture, that we know very well, because they ruled over us. They tried to own us, to control us. They killed us and destroyed us. They tried to destroy everything that belonged to us. But we survived and we stood our ground, because we are strong. I love history, and I have been studying history ever since I started using the internet. But it takes some thinking to realize what history really tells us. When we look at interactions between the Islamic world and the Western Christian world, or the Islamic religion and the Christian religion, we see that the two sides constantly fought against each other. Islam attacked and slowly invaded the Christian world, but was never able to fully overpower the stronghold of the Christian world, Europe. Islamic empires took control of so many previously Christian lands, like the Levant, North Africa, or Anatolia. They also took control of Spain once, or the Balkans, but much of that was not permanent. Although Muslims took control of Constantinople and destroyed the unity of Orthodox Christians, two very important attacks by the Islamic empires to break and conquer Europe, the Battle of Tours and the Siege of Vienna, failed. The Crusades were campaigns whose main objective was arguably to restore Christian land lost to Muslims. The Spanish Christians reconquered Spain from Muslims and tried to expand again into North Africa. Divided European kingdoms often came together to defend Europe from Muslims or to reconquer or expand into Muslim lands. It's all a big conflict, but what we can see is that the two sides were always rivals who never submitted to each other. When we come to India, however, the situation was quite different. Muslim rulers had always an obsession with India, which doesn't only come from a hadith, in which Muhammad reportedly says that those people who invade India will be free from hellfire. It also comes from the fact that India was considered wealthy, and since they were considered polytheist pagans, and seen by Muslims as perverted transgressors, Muslim rulers assumed the right to conquer and pillage India, while subjugating the entire population. Muslim invasions of India started very early in Islamic history, in the 7th century, and aggressively in the 8th century. In the following centuries, Muslim rulers already assumed northwest India to be Islamic soil, and ruled it without problems. But later conquests were even more aggressive, and penetrated today's India. The Islamic Delhi Sultanate ruled much of today's India, and practiced Islamic supremacy. The Mughal Empire ruled much of India for three centuries, and during the rule of all of these, temples were desecrated and destroyed, slaves were taken, women were treated as property, wealth was taken, India was pillaged. Many were practically forced and pushed to accept Islam. Most Hindus and other minorities had to pay protection money and be insulted on a daily basis, which is an Islamic strategy to mentally push minorities to accept Islam. In fact, Sikhism was mostly formed and established as a reaction and opposition to the oppression of minorities by the Islamic rulers. Muslim rulers treated India as their own subject, and despite the fact that most Indians fiercely resisted Islam and held on to their traditions and beliefs, Muslims considered India Islamic land. Only in the 17th and 18th centuries did Indians rise and start to take control of the lands again, but until then, Islam brutally ruled India for centuries and destroyed much of a culture that was previously flourishing and promising. Islam brought slavery back to India, religious persecution, endless conflicts and wars, destruction of holy sites, mass killings, and more. Estimations of the death toll of the Islamic invasion of India resemble no other conflict in history. It is a surprise that we don't even talk about this very much. And despite all of this, Indian culture and the Indian way of living was upheld and preserved by Indians. India suffered and was tortured, but never surrendered. Hinduism is shaped by a vast collection of texts, moral examples, human and divine stories to respect and look up to, while not treating them as unquestionably perfect and flawless. That makes them more relatable, likable, more human. 
That is a very different concept, an entirely different way of thinking and living, and can't be expected to be replaced by a religion that gives you clear do's and don'ts on every irrelevant detail in a daily life. A perfect human who was morally very questionable as a perfect example for everyone to imitate. And a god that insults, threatens, and persecutes everyone who has a problem accepting and following him word for word. Today's Indians, who value and uphold their history, their traditions, their culture, are naturally proud of their strength in front of an invading force that wanted to destroy everything Indians stood for. If your history is shaped by such an invasion, but even more shaped by your successful resistance against that invasion, it is very normal that you will react at least with disagreement, and at best with rejection, when that culture approaches you today and tries to win you over. Indians who are familiar with their history know Islam very well, and will not be easily convinced by modern Muslims trying to tell them that they didn't understand or know Islam. Especially if the result of that history can be seen very clearly on a map where Pakistan is a separate country and a very troubled one in their relationship with you only because of religious differences. And it doesn't help that you hear daily about Kashmir, a torn region within India where a major terrorist attack happened only recently, also because of Islam. This is why the Indian or Hindu objection to Islam is very different from anywhere else in the world. It was not a rival of Islam like the Western world. It was not struck and shattered by Islam like the Eastern European world. It wasn't defeated, annihilated, and forgotten like many cultures in the Middle East, North Africa, and Persia. It was subdued, pressured, tortured, but stood strong and rose again just to be stronger. This is why many are proud of it and have every right to be proud. In the future, I will go more into explaining uh, cultures and their confrontations with Islam, and I will also go much further in details into the Islamic invasion of India. I myself will try to understand India and Hinduism even more, because no matter how much you learn, there is a lot here to learn from. Thank you. If you like this video, don't forget to like, to subscribe and to share. Most of my videos are not monetized, so if you want to support me and this channel, you can support me on Patreon or on apostateprofit.com. Thank you all for your contribution. I will be back with more videos. Until then, have a great time and stay away from Islam.